and welcome back to Big Sunday here at the Max Stern Athletic Center. I'm Alex Salutsky along with Zach Schulman, and we're here for another exciting matchup between the Berman Hebrew Academy Cougars from Rockville, Maryland, and the Katsushiva High School Storm from Boca Raton, Florida. The last time Berman was in the Tier 2, was in Tier 2, it was in 2013 championship game when they lost to MTA. This time around, they're looking to finish off the trip and bring home a title. And Cats didn't even get a chance to be in Tier 1 where they have been in the last couple of years because of the seeding. And they look to prove to everyone that they are no underdog to this Tier 2, that they deserve to be in Tier 1. A key matchup to watch out for tonight is going to be big men. Daniel Portnoy versus Josh Levidian from Berman. Daniel Portnoy has been coming off the bench providing valuable minutes for Cats and and Berman and <laughs> Levidian has been a very solid big man for for Berman as they he's been averaging the double double true force to reckon with down low it'll be a true battle of the big men. It sure will be and it will be a great matchup in this tier two quarterfinal or semifinal I'm sorry Winner of this game plays the TABC Storm, who just won the game before this one. <laughs> and the game will be played tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Now let's go over the starters for both teams. For the Cougars, we have number 10, Josh Levidian, big man in the middle. Number 5, Ezra Beletsky. Number 32, Ellie Lowenstein. Number 12, Renan Glasshofer. And number... Number three, Kobe Melkin. And for the Katsushiva High School, we have number 15, Ariel Berger. Number 21, Andrew Pearl. Number three, Jonah Lasko. Number 33, big man in the middle, David Kahana. And number three, Jonah Lasko. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I already said Jonah Lasko. Number 35, Jonah Tripp. Should be a very good game. Both the... You know, it's been a very long day today, a lot of good games, you know, but we still have a solid crowd here in the Maxstone Athletic Center. As we get set for a tip, tip between Jonah Tripp and Josh Levidian. Josh Levidian, brother of Sarah Czech, le or, yeah, Sarah Czech legend, jo um, Joey Levidian. And the tip is controlled by Melkin. Melkin to Glasshoffer. To Levidian, playing a little bit on the outside. Boletsky swings it. Ball tipped away, picked up by Tripp. Ball loose, picked up by Lasko. Great active hands. We see we saw that a lot against Kohelet and against T um, Ida Crown. And the three's up from Berger, and it is no good. Katz's guards are known to be very well defensive played. Three on three. Melkin being guarded by Jonah Lasko. Melkin a senior. Josh Levidian a senior. And the rest are juniors, except for Ellie Lowenstein, who's a sophomore, and the three is knocked down. Or sorry, it was a two. My bad. Ariel Berger strong to the basket, drawing the foul. He did that time and time again against Kohelet, and he gets to the line where he's been living this whole entire tournament. Berger, free throw is no good. Rebounded by Glasshofer. Controlled by Melkin. To continue my thought from before, Glasshofer and Boletsky are both juniors. And a nice floater by Melkin over the taller defenders. And we have a 4-2 Berman ball game. This Berman team is a great team. They hung tough with a very good Frisch team, and they beat MTA, two Yeshiva League teams. And the ball is put in by Jonah Tripp. And it is a tie ball game. Cats is doing the usual full court defense. We saw that earlier in the tournament as well. Exactly. They like to create turnovers. Great pass from Lowenstein to Levidian, giving each, giving each other the points. It was a great play, great team effort there. Pearl back to Berger. Berger to Lasko. They're going to try to look to get Pearl open. He hit, I think, four threes it was against Kohelet. Very good shooter. Out to Kahana. Kahana drives. Strong take. No good. Ball loose. Picked up by Melk. Oh, ball still loose. Picked up by Tripp. 
to Berger on the wing. Berger back to Pearl. He'll pop it, and he does, and it is off the front rim, rebounded by Boletsky. Boletsky gives it back to Melkin to set up the offense. They will let Pearl keep seeing those shots, though, because that is his go-to. He yeah. is their go-to shooter. Three by the big man. Levidian is no good, rebounded by Tripp. And we're off to the fast break. Good pass by Pearl to Kahana, and he misses the bunny. And Boletsky gets the rebound. Boletsky looking to push. This is going to be a fast-paced game all the way. Boletsky trying to take the taller burger. Puts it up, no good. Ball up there, picked up by Boletsky again. Man, he is feisty. He's a small guy out there. He's getting a ton of rebounds. Nice pass to Lowenstein. He is bumped, no call. And now there's over-the-back call on Lowenstein after the missed shot. Boletsky is a very energy guy. He's the heart of the team. He will be going after those boards. There's no giving up in him. That is for sure. When you don't have the size, you got to have the heart. <laughs> and looks like Mark Schulman stepping up into the game. Stepping into the game. Jacob Schulman, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark Schulman. The ball is tipped out of bounds, stays with Katz. Mark Schulman is also one of those guys, kind of like Boletsky. He, he's very energetic. He'll get to the hoop with no. Jacob Schulman, I keep saying Mark Schulman. Jacob Schulman. Will get to the hoop at will, is not afraid to go against the big man as a foul is called, drawn by Pearl. Third foul of the half for Berman, zero for Katz. Berman seems to be getting into some really foul trouble. Lasko controlling the ball, being guarded by Melkin. Pick set by Portnoy, the guy who we talked about in the pregame. He checks into the game, and the ball is turned over off the foot of Lasko. Good defense there from Glasshoffer. <laughs> Melkin controls the ball from the press, gives it to Levidian. Levidian, nice pass from Lowenstein. Lowenstein pass to Boletsky. Boletsky, great pass to Levidian, and he is fouled. Great ball movement by Berman, and that's what they're going to need to do to break this press. That will be key. Quick ball movement, getting the ball, whipping the ball around. That's how to break out of these zones and hardcore presses. Another way to break the zone is to have a big man just like Levidian standing in the middle, kind of like a, you know, kind of like to be there for like a little bit of an outlet. He'll get the ball, he'll give it off quick because, you know, if he gets the ball in the middle there on a press, he'll get trapped as the first one is rimmed in and out. Levidian needs to take his time here. You know, early in the game, you don't want to be missing any free throws when you're not tired. And the second one is good. 7-3 ball game, Berman up on Katz with about a, a little bit under five minutes left in the first quarter. Schulman controlling the ball. Lasko playing off ball, he's the usual point guard. And an offensive foul. He, tried, he pushed off on the defender. Good call by the ref, he extended the arm. Glass off for the inbound, gives it to Melkin. Melkin to that to Levidian in the middle, just like I said. To Lowenstein. Lowenstein takes it to the hoop. Off the rim. No good. Ball loose. Picked up by Schulman. Schulman trapped. Nice pass to Pearl. He's on the break. Pearlman looking, I mean Pearl to looks to be taken to himself. Nice cross-court pass to Lasko. Lasko. Nice pass inside to Portnoy. Portnoy puts it in. There's Portnoy doing damage down low. Big man in the middle. Can do it all. Good pass there from Lasko. Great vision from Pearl to get it to Lasko. And this is going to be a great game, I can tell, because of the great ball movement we've already seen early in this game. Boletsky crossing up. Berger, he puts it up, and he is fouled. Great play by Boletsky. Two fast-paced offenses going back and forth. You're definitely in for an entertaining one. You know, I always say about ball movement, it's a key to success. <laughs> Call me Coach Pop. Boletsky to the line. First one is good. And that will extend the lead to a two-point ball game. Boletsky's got one more, a little bit under four. Four minutes left in the first quarter here at the Max Live Center. Tier two semifinal between Berman and Katz. Boletsky sinks the second one. Nice stroke there from Boletsky. Schulman controlling the point. They might look to get Lasko a couple shots off ball because, you know, Schulman has been playing the point. Schulman doesn't seem to be much of a shooter. As he drives in with no fear, and he is blocked by Levidian. Do not go up against Levidian. Starts a fast break. Laid up and in by Boletsky. He's been so great this entire game. Defense to offense. That might be one of the key, keys to victory in this game. 
And the Berman fans are hyped after that great play by Boletsky. And the ball is turned over, knocked away from Portnoy and out of bounds. Back to Berman with a five point lead. Cats better be careful with the ball. Down by five, they can't be, they can't be risky not putting up any shots. Because if you don't put up shots, you will not get any points. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Last offer, steps in, kicks it out to Lowenstein. Lowenstein kicks it out to Boletsky. Boletsky three is off the mark. Great hustle play by Berger to get it. Oh, oh, oh. He throws. And he throws it out of bounds. Great play there by Berger to get the ball between four Berman defenders, but he eventually turns it over. That's hard and hustle. That's showing that he wants to win this one. Who wouldn't? It's tier two. Got a great night. Been a long day. These guys have been waiting to play. They don't want to come out of here with a loss. And the miss by Boletsky going 1,000 miles an hour. Throws it too hard off the glass. And there is a foul called on Katz on the floor. Loose ball foul on the rebound. I guess we'll be saying Boletsky's name a lot. So... He's just been everywhere on this court. Fingerprints all over this game. Glasshoffer inbounds it to Boletsky. Boletsky wants to shoot, wants to take the taller burger off the dribble, swings it back to Melkin. Melkin to Lowenstein. Lowenstein inside to Lavidian. He is fouled by Portnoy. Portnoy, that is his second foul. He better be careful there. I mean, that's what Lavidian does. You know, we talked about this matchup. We're going to talk about it a lot. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, that's Portnoy's third foul. You better really be careful. Jonah Tripp is going to come to the game. Nice pass from Glasshoffer to Lavidian. It might have been caused by that lack of wanting to foul by Portnoy. He played a little soft on the defense, and Lavidian got a nice layup to push the lead up to 13-6. to six. Pump fake by Lasko. Steps back, drains the three, and he is hyped at, as he holds up his three fingers, indicating that he just hit a three to cut this lead to four. And a turnover, unforced turnover. This is a game of runs, Alec, and right now Katz is going to go on one. <laughs> it looks like Lowenstein went on for a run as he traveled there. <laughs> looks like Betesh checks into the game. A.B. Betesh, brother of Ralph Betesh. Another great point guard for this Herbert, uh, Katz team. As Tripp misses the, re misses the shot, Rebound by you know who Boletsky. Ball stripped, picked up by Lasko, and the ball is out of bounds. Back to Katz. This game has been very fast paced, as we assumed it would. I'm sure Coach Udowitz for the Katz sideline told him never give up. He's got a pretty deep bench there. You know, I mean, if he's getting guys in foul trouble, you just got to give the next man up, you know? As, as I just said, Andrew Pearl is checking back into the game. There he goes to the scores table. We'll check back at the next dead ball. Pearl, um, Shulman, nice take to the basket, and he is fouled. Talking about the Cats bench and how deep they are, I was talking to Coach Udowitz back in the first game, and he said that the foul trouble didn't bother him because he trusts all the guys on his bench. He believes in them, as, as he should. It's a good coach. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, as Shulman misses the first, you know, he has to trust his guys because if he's going to play a full-court press the whole entire game, He's got to have guys ready. You know, these guys, you know, they're young guys. You know, I know they got a lot of energy. But they're still, you know, they're still human. They're still going to get tired. They got to have some subs in there as Shulman misses both free throws. It's under two minutes here in the first quarter, Melkin, point guard, gives it up to Lowenstein. Lowenstein being guarded by Tripp, giving a lot of space. Boletsky, 4-3, no good. Glasshoffer almost got that rebound. Picked up by the smallest guy, Betesh. Betesh crossing over everyone. Nice pass to Tripp, and he can't handle it. Picked up by Lowenstein. Two on one. Lowenstein stolen away from Shulman. Shulman, nice pass up ahead to Betesh, and he lays it up in it. Great play there by the Cads defense. Defense to offense. That's how you got to do it. Props to Shulman on a two on one fast break. Get in the steal. It's all in the name. Shulman, yes. Let me remind you folks, my color commentator, my partner in crime right here, Zach Shulman. I don't think there's any relation. No, uh, he spells it with a C. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spell shift like that? <laughs> there's probably some relation down the line. Boletsky gives it into number 15, who just checked into the game. Uh, Tani Levinson. 
block. Nice block there by Tripp, and it is picked up by Levidian, and he puts it back up and in to make it a 15 to 11 lead with 40 seconds left in this one. Shulman running the offense, gives it to Betesh, running a weave play, and he takes Melkin off the dribble. Sorry, that's not Betesh, that's Lasko. Lasko kicks it out to Betesh, swings it to Shulman, swings it to Pearl, long three off the rim. That one almost fell, that will fall. I'm predicting for the uh, at, during the rest of this game because Pro is a very very good three point shooter. He tried shooting that one all the way from Morg Lounge. <laughs> I think Morg Lounge is the other way. Shout out to Morg Lounge. <laughs> Melkin going up against the trees, unable to get that one to fall, and with one second left. And that one almost went <laughs> also as we will head to the second, second quarter after a short commercial break, 15 to 11, Berman. We're back here at the Max Stern Athletic Center here on Big Sunday for the Red Sarachak Tournament. We just got a report from the Cats sidelines. Zach, you want to tell us what they said? Cats coach is really, he wants them to keep pushing and keep running. Can't slow down, can't give up anything. Definitely. And we de we've seen that, you know. Berman was up to a 13-6 lead. Thought that Berman was going to pull away. They've been dominating on defense, dominating on offense. And all of a sudden, Cats... Gets inside, gets an ant or made a couple of shots here or there. Played some great defense, got a fast break layup, and they were within. They were within two before that score by Levidian, and now it is only a four-point game. It's still close. And on the other side, Berman coach does not want them to have the such fast-paced offense. He wants them to slow it down and try to set up plays. So we're going to see it will come out the slow and steady or fast-paced pushing. Now the Cats coach Udowitz, coach Udowitz has a three-guard set as Lasko. Hoists up a three, picked up by Betesh, and he puts it up and in. Great. Little man getting the big board. As just what I was about to say is that he's playing a four-guard set here. He's got Shulman, Betesh, Lasko, and Pearl with Trip in the middle. Trip himself as a nice errant, errant pass by number 23, who just checked into the game, Aaron Schopf. Schopf. He really trusts these guys to rebound. You know, sometimes a small lineup can be very effective on offense and sometimes backfire on defense. But he, like you know, we've talked about before, Coach Udowitz definitely has his trust in his teammates. Pump fake by Pearl. Puts it up and puts it in over Levidian. Maybe this will get Pearl start going, heating up maybe. Yeah, definitely. Anything for a shooter like Pearl, shooter like anyone, any shot that goes in can definitely heat you up. Melkin. Kicks it out to number 15, Levinson. Levinson, Schampf, 4-3. It's good. Great ball movement around the perimeter from Berman. It went from Schampf to Melkin to Levinson, back to Melkin, back to Schampf, 4-3. And now we got a three-point ball game. Pearl kicks it out to Lasko. Lasko driving on Melkin, fakes him out, gives it to Shulman. See, the thing about this four-guard set is that anybody can, pit, anybody can control the offense, anybody can drive. They got all four guys out there, ball movers. It's going to be really hard to play defense on this. Definitely, especially if they play bigger than their size. Rebound by Betesh. Especially if Betesh keep getting all these offensive rebounds. Put a bunny on that man. Betesh misses the bunny, and it is secured by Levison. And Melkin says, let's slow it down as he gives it to Schumpf. Almost turned over, and a foul is called. A little too eager there. Pearl saw the ball loose a little bit ahead of Schumpf. And he reaches in and fouls. Checking into the game now for Cats is big man David Kahana. And new, checking in for the first time, number 23, Brandon Munter. I remember from that Kohala game. I was actually covering that game. Hopefully you Cats fans remember me. Hopefully you enjoyed my voice and my play-by-play. -play. Munter hit a very big three in that game. It's crucial to that win against Kohala. Ball swung around from Schampf to Boletsky. Boletsky gives it, ball tipped away. 
tipped it by Munter. Munter was trying to plea his case that he did not touch the ball. He really just wants the ball back because he sees that they're only down by three and they could tie it up. The ref ruled kick ball. Can't argue with the ref. Yeah, definitely cannot argue with the ref when we're alive. <laughs> Schomf, nice pass to the corner. Levison, 4-3, is no good off the side of the backboard. Picked up by Betish. Here's that lightning quick four-guard set offense that we were looking forward to see. And Betish loses the ball. Great hustle by Levison. The ball on the floor. And the call is timeout Berman. Great hustle there from both teams. It really looks like, you know, you got Le Levidian in the middle, you got Kahana in the middle, but they're surrounded by four guards on each side. What I really like what I'm seeing from both teams is that every loose ball, you see a pile of bodies diving after it. No one's giving up easily. Every, every space of real estate is so precious to this, these teams. Yeah, definitely. You know, Berman hasn't been in the tournament for, I think, two years now? Cats, you know, they're in it pretty much every year. But... You know, this is the Tier 2 semis. This is the Tier 2 semis, and all is on the line here. Lose, you don't go home yet. You probably go home tomorrow. But loser of this game plays somewhere else, not in Max Stern Athletic Center, probably in Westchester. I don't know who would want to go to Westchester when you could play in the Max Stern Athletic Center for the Tier 2 championship. So all is on the line here. We just got a report from the sideline reporters that Katz is actually going to switch it up and try to settle down the offense instead of pushing the pace. Okay. I mean, they got, you know, they took out um, Lasko and put in, oh, Lasko's still in there. They put Berger back in the game, a bigger guy standing tall at 6'3". Schomp, who hit a three before, fakes. Nice pass inside it. Two, number 32, Levis, Lowenstein, sorry, Lowenstein, who's back in the game. And he is fouled from behind. Great pump fake there to get his defender in the air as he draws the foul. Levison steps to the line for the first time tonight. We'll see him shoot for the first time. Actually, it's the first shot of the night. We saw that he got fouled on the layup. We just got in that Berman wants more cuts to the hoop to get more layup looks. Sweet lefty stroke right there. Lowenstein is only a sophomore standing tall at 6'1". Man, if I was 6'1 when I was a sophomore, huh, man, that would've been great. But I'm not even 6'1 now. Lasko. Controlling the offense. Munter, he wants to shoot. He does. Ball off the front of the rim. Scramble for the ball. Picked up by the big man, Levidian. Gives it to Boletsky. Three on two fast break. And he is blocked by Berger. Great hustle there from Munter to get the ball to Lasko. And just like we talked about before, Lasko will settle the offense and slow it down. Munter swings it to the corner to Betesh. Betesh swings it to the swings it to the top of the key from Berger to Munter. Munter, ball knocked away from you know who Boletsky. Boletsky goes up. Oh, oh, and he is fouled hard. Looks like everyone's okay. From my view, it looked like he took a shot to the face, but it does not appear that way as he's okay. Yeah, tough guy. Come on, this is Boletsky here we're talking about. You really think a shot to the face would affect the middle? Not this man, no way. No, sir. He's been very good for them, Boletsky. He's been everywhere. If you're just tuning in now, Boletsky has definitely been the MVP of this game so far as he sinks the free throw. You know, not only with his points, he probably has maybe about six or seven points, but he's been everywhere getting steals and rebounds, making that extra pass around the perimeter to hit the open shooter as he misses the free throw rebounded by Munter. Munter gives it up to Betesh. They're pushing the ball. And they settle down with Lasko being guarded by Boletsky. Gives it to Berger in the corner. Berger looks to drive as he does so often. Kicks it out to Lasko for three. No good. Rebound Kahana pushes through the, the paint and he misses the bunny over the defender. And it is rebounded by Berman. Berman looking to push. Boletsky with the ball in the wing. Levinson, nice pass to Levidia. Levidia goes up strong over Kahana and he puts it in to make it an eight-point lead. They're slowing down the offense. You got cut to the hoop, and there's the open layup. You know, just like they drew it up. Three by Lasko is no good. Rebounded by Levidian. Levidian, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier in the pregame, but he averaged a double-double this year. Absolute force down low. Absolute force. It will be a handful for the Cats team. And Lasko tried to draw the charge, but he has called for the block. And that looks to be the eighth team foul for Katz. That should be a one and one for Lo Lowenstein. I'm sorry if 
if I start if I'm calling him Levinson, Levinson, Lowenstein, tongue twister galore. Um, my apologies to the Lowenstein and to the Levinson family. No disrespect to your name. We got Lowenstein stepping up to the line. First front end of the one and one. Sweet lefty stroke, and he makes the first to push it to a nine-point lead with under four minutes left in the first half. Lowenstein again. Four for four from the line to make it a ten-point lead. Maybe Yudo, Coach Yudo which should tell his guys to keep pushing the ball. You know, they haven't really had so much success on the offensive end since they stopped pushing it. It seems to be that their strength would be the fast-paced one. Well, when they got guys like Batesh and Lasko and Shulman and Pearl and Berger. Well, Berger wasn't in that lineup before, but Berger's a great player. Um, you'll be successful in the fast break. When they went small, that was when they were really confusing the Berman defense. Floater by Lasko. It is no good. Rebounded by Lasko. Taken away from Lowenstein. Lo he tries to give it up to Kahana. Ball on the floor. Bodies on the ground. Oh, the bodies on the, are ground. on the ground. Kahana grabs the ball, and it looks to be. That reminded me of a fumble in the NFL. A double foul, it appears to be. Or er, refs are discussing. We got three refs in the house today. Last night we only had two. But with the implications of this game, you know, you got to have as much callers, callers, or make sure you eyes on the right call. eyes on the game. Got to get all the calls right, as it looks like. Checking into the game is shooting guard Zach Fogel, number two. Jacob Schulman is also back into the game. Okay, so. You know, he's got a small-ish lineup. He's got Lasko, he's got Shulman and Betesh into the game. That's, I think that Lasko's second foul, so maybe that may be the reason why Shulman came to check in for him. They should really start looking to Pearl to really free him up because they really undersized inside, especially with Tripp in foul trouble, with Portnoy in foul trouble. They should get, to Pearl, get Pearl the ball on the outside. Getting Pearl going might be able to help them cut into this 10-point deficit. Schomp. Nice pass to Fogel. Fogel back to Sean for three again. Can he do it? It is good. Nice shot. Great play. Great pass from Fogel. Fogel hit him in stride. Oh, not hit him in stride. Hit him when he was set. Sean, who hit it previously from a couple minutes ago, duplicates that. And now the lead is up to 13. Ball movement was really what set that one up. Per oh, for three is no good. Maybe you should take a step in. Well, I mean, if he takes a step in, there might be a defender in his face because they mightily respect his jumper. So he, he could either drive to the basket or shoot from farther. Oh, Schomp tried to fake everyone out by that three. Gives an errant pass up to Betis. Betis loses the ball, and he is called for the double dribble. The pass is too hot for him to handle. Ball will go back to Berman as Fogel checks out of the game. And back into the game is Melkin. Fogel did a pretty good job there, get finding the open man for Schomp. That could be a difference in this game. And there's a foul off the ball called, and they're in the bonus. I think that's double bonus, actually. Should get two free throws. Melkin steps up to the line. Now Melkin, he's a senior. Stands tall at 5'8". Stands tall. Very tall. And, you know, he seems to be kind of like this fearless leader of the front court of Berman. You know, he's got Boletsky and Glasshofer with him, both juniors, both very skilled juniors, that is. And Melkin seems to be that kind of guy who kind of like, you know, maybe mentors these younger players as they've been so successful this whole entire year. As a timeout is called by Berman. Berman or Katz, one of them two. It's a timeout. Yeah, I think Kobe Melkin came into this year knowing that he was going to be the senior point guard, took on the leadership role to mentor, to set them up, the younger guards for next year. Hopefully they can come back and be in this position for Tier 1. Definitely. I think Melkin, if he is going to Israel, wherever he is next year, will be watching this Sarachek tournament if Berman is back because, you know, they got a bunch of young guys. They're very skilled, very talented. They're definitely going to miss Melkin. They're definitely going to miss Levidian. They're going to miss Fogel and all the other seniors on the team. And um, 
Yeah, and just uh, he'll be very proud if they're successful. Who wouldn't be? And I would like to thank our sponsor, Clip Keep Us. Thank you for um, Clip Keep Us, our sponsor. They're also sponsoring our comments, questions, sponsoring our Clip Keep Us inbox. I'm sorry. Please email us at feedback at maxlive.com with any shout outs, comments, questions, or concerns about our broadcast. You can tell us, give us a shout out, or give a shout out to anyone, give us a shout out. Tell us how good we're doing. You know, we like those kind of mementos as Melkin sinks both free throws to push it up to a 15-point lead, doubling the score 30-15 to 15, with under three minutes left in this, sec in this first second quarter. We just got word from the sideline that the Cats' team is not worried about this big deficit as they are, they are very determined to just chip away and come back in the second half. <laughs> well, they can't be doing careless fouls if they want to do that. You know, keep putting Berman who I don't even think they missed a free throw. I think maybe missed one or two in this game. They're shooting probably about 70 or 80%, which is great as a team. And you don't want to put these guys on the free throw line. Berger looks to drive on a smaller defender, Levinson. Yeah, Levinson, got it right that time. And he goes up, and he is fouled. Lasco, that is. And he will head to the line for two to try to chip away in this lead. Stay tuned for the Step It Up halftime show coming up at half in about two minutes and nine seconds. Lasko, first one is up, and it rims in and out. It seems to be that kind of night for these Cat Storm. Sometimes you get the rolls, sometimes you don't. Eventually they will. I mean, we saw a lot of the basketball, the shots bounce around the rim. And we just got word <coughs> that on Friday against... M uh, yeah, no, no, right. I was there for that. Against Ida Crown, they came back from a 15-point deficit. So, and especially, and right now it's 14. It's still only the second quarter. The ball is out of bounds to Berman. No, no comeback is too hard to overcome for these guys. It's a game of runs, and any run, you could go on a run at any time to make it a game. Melkin, nice drive. And he is fouled by Pearl. I kind of see where the... The ref was going with that. He got a little body there. It was a nice block. It hit the ball, but he also, you know, he hit him with the body. So that's definitely a foul. Checking into the game is number 13, Zev Namro, junior, six foot, six foot junior. First time checking into the game in this one. And Schomp gets a standing ovation from the Berman crowd as he nailed two threes, two for two. Providing value minutes off the bench. Definitely. And that's what you want as a coach. You want guys to come in not only to just be there and give your starters a rest as the shot is missed, picked up by, Nam or picked up by number four, Kozowski, who's also into the game. And the shot was missed by Lowenstein. And the ball is taken by Lasko. He loses the ball on the floor, gives it up to Tripp. Berman fans want to travel. Berman players want to travel. And with a couple of fakes, Berger misses the long two, and it is secured by Levinson. Levinson, ball to Melkin. Melkin drives. Nice dish to Kozowski, and one. Great find there from Melkin, the floor general himself, commanding that one to go in, and it did. I wonder if this full court press that Katz has been playing is going to eventually tire them out, as they've been playing a lot of games in the past few days. Well, checking into the game for the first time is number 25. Donnie Sasson along with Munter, Brandon Munter. So he's trying to get these fresh legs in here. You know, first time checking in, it's been almost the, first, the whole first half as Kozowski misses the, <coughs> the and one free throw. Rebounded by Sasson, controlled by Lasko. Lasko to Tripp, Tripp kicks it out to Betes. Betes always looking to attack, throws it, hits a bunch of Berman players, a little bit of pinball there, picked up eventually by Levinson. Levinson gives it to, to uh, Melkin to set up the offense, being guarded by Betes. 
Looks like um, Bur it looks like Katz is a little in a little bit of a zone. Melkin steps up for three. It's short, and the ball goes out of bounds. Off of Katz, and the ball will go back to Berman with 43 seconds left with a 15-point lead. They just got a fresh shot clock after that. Well, listen, if you're Katz, you're thinking to yourself, I want to get a stop, as they just did. And with 40 seconds left in the half, they want to hold the ball. Try to get that last shot. A two for one. Two for one. Well, I mean, it's already too late for that, but... As the ball's knocked away, as I was saying, you know, you want to get a good offensive possession. They lost the ball there. Controlled by Melkin, and now Melkin will have a chance to push their lead. Definitely not what Katz was looking for there. Ball tipped away by Betesh. Active hands given to Levinson on the inside. Pass from Kazowski. Good pass from Kazowski from the high post. And Levinson will head to the free throw line. Berman is picking apart the zone defense that Katz has been so successful with early in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Katz, you know, they've been pressing for, th this is a third straight game now. They might be a little bit of, they might be a little tired here. I wonder if they would decide to do maybe a little bit of half-court defense. I think, well, actually, I think they have been doing a little bit of half-court defense. As Levison sinks the first to push it to an 18-point lead. And Fogel is back into the game. Shout out to Alicia and Shuey Fogel, good friends of mine here at YU. I don't know if they're at the game or not, if they're listening. Hey, guys. And the second one is missed. Picked up by Tripp. He's double teamed. Fetesh, three seconds on the clock. Two, one, Munter from half court. It is almost good. That looked to be good. And we will head to Ari Leifter at the Berman sideline with the coach. With the Berman coach, Jonas Singer. Right, Coach, a great first half from you. Could you give us some insight into what you told your team in order to build such a large lead before halftime? Yeah, they, they play real scrappy defense, and we don't want to get into a sloppy kind of game. I feel like when we run our offensive sets, we're going to get good looks every single time. We don't want to get into a sloppy game with them. They're, they are really an effort team. They're all over you. They pressure you a lot, and we just need to make sure to run our sets. That's really what I told them. Thank you. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you in the broadcast. Thank you, Ari, and we will send it now to the Step It Up Halftime Show. We'll be back with the second half.
Welcome to Step It Up. And we are back here with the Max Stern Athletic Center. It has been a pretty lopsided first half, but what, what have we seen here in this first half? Well, we know that Katz, Katz is going to be mixing it up without the defenses. We saw throughout the first half they went from zone to full press to just half court man to man. I think the coach is going to find the right combo of players and strategy to complete this comeback. Well, we saw Coach Udowitz formulate something against Ida Crown to make them come back. Ida Crown, a very good team. We've seen them win, you know, we've seen them throughout the years. They've been a very successful program, very good coach, very good players. And Cats, just all of a sudden, they were down, and all, they just came back. I mean, I was there at the game. I don't remember what I was doing. Maybe I was working some kind of max live, but... Um, but, um, you know, I just all of a sudden you just blink and boom, it's a 12-point game. Boom, it's a 9-point game. Boom, it's tied. Boom, Cats is up. And that's what happens. I've been saying this throughout the night. I'm probably going to keep saying this. This is a game of runs. And we're going to send it over to the Cats sideline where Natan Seredny is with Coach Udowitz. And we're back here with Coach Udowitz. So you're down by 18. How do you expect to get back in the second half? Yeah, we're going to need to provide better energy this half. Our energy was really not on par with what we're used to. So we're going to have to get better with our energy and just playing with a little bit more discipline. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you guys in the booth. For that, Natan. And we will, we're definitely looking forward to this second half here. You know, I mean, like, it's not like Katz was down in that Ida Crown game by – you know, 15 in, like, the first quarter, and they came back in, like, you know, the second. They were down in the third. Start of the fourth, actually. They just stormed back. Man, it was crazy. And this is what we're going to have to look forward to. Hopefully they can pull it off again, make this a good game. Another key thing that you should look out for in this half, it's not – Cats played very well in the first half. Their shots just weren't getting – like, they just weren't getting the bounces or the rolls they needed. That could easily turn around in this half, and it, all of a sudden it could be a tie game. That is – that is definitely true. I mean, like, when the shots aren't falling, the shots aren't falling. But eventually – you just hope, actually. You know, not even eventually. Sometimes the shots just don't fall. But maybe 
just maybe the Storm can pull that off and maybe they'll start hitting shots. But we have to give a credit to Berman's defense. Berman, they haven't given up much on the defensive end. You know, we see Pearl shooting from, you know, let's 25 feet out, a little bit farther than what he's used to because he's a little bit, you know, he's a little intimidated. Maybe not necessarily intimidated, but he's afraid to shoot so close because the Berman defenders are always there up in his face. This Cougar team definitely has a ferocious defense. Oh, yes, they do. And Katz will have the ball to start this second half. Lasko to Pearl. Pearl to a nice pick set by Lasko to Berger. Berger puts it up. A little wild shot picked up by Kahana. Kind of puts it up, and he puts it in. We just got word from the Cats sideline that they think the first five minutes of this half are going to be the most important to set the tone. Yes, they're in an extended 3-2 defense. Stemming all the way to half court. Broken easily by Berman. Nice mid-range shot. Pump fake by Melkin, and that was smooth there. Great pass there from Boletsky to, Ber to uh, Melkin, and he sinks it. Berger, another wild shot. And he and the ball is knocked out of bounds back to Berman. You know, last, um, Berger needs to settle it down, needs to you know look for his teammates before he gets too close to the basket so he can make a nice pass. That's definitely what this Storm offense needs. Boletsky for three. It is no good. Rebounded by Berger. He looks to push as he always does. And he sees a lane open. Puts it up. No foul called. Picked up by Glasshoffer. Glasshoffer racing up the court. Ball lo lost. Picked up by Lasko. Lasko, nice pass to Berger. Berger blocked from behind. Levidian, great block there. He's protecting his house, and he's letting Berger know it. Speaking of Levidi Levidian's house, I'm, I'm sure I think he's... One of six boys of the Levitian household. And a foul is called on Berman. Boletsky doesn't like the call, but he bumped him. You know, that's definitely been a foul called throughout this entire tournament. You know, if you put a hand in there, if you bump a body, that'll be a foul. These reps have been blowing whistles nonstop. <laughs> I mean, that's their job. Lasko being guarded by Melkin. This matchup has been very, there's been a great matchup this whole game. You know, Melkin versus Lasko. Um, Berger kicks out to Pearl. Pearl, long three. It's no good. Picked up by Kahana. Kahana double team. Blocked from behind by Lev Lowenstein. Lowenstein. <laughs> Levinson's not in the game. Glass offered to the corner. Lowenstein for three. No good. Rebounded by Kahana. Kahana. Outlet pass to Berger. Berger to Lasko. Lasko to Pearl. Pearl looking to drive. Pushes off. And he puts it up. And he puts it in. There's that roll we were talking about that they were hoping to have in the second half. Watch. They're going to start going on a run now. As the Cats faithful is chanting defense, hoping that their team can get a few stops here. Bletsky, nice fake there. Take it, takes it inside off the back of the back off back of the rim. Nice play by Levidian, being hounded by three Cats defenders. Puts it up and he gets fouled. Shout out to Avi Katz, who will be tuning, a good friend of mine, who's tuning in for probably the next game, but he's a good friend, so he decided to listen to me now. Thank you, Avi. Shot is good from Levidian. Levidian has actually, he's been a little bit under the radar. He hasn't had a bad game. He hasn't, I mean, he's definitely had, not definitely had, hadn't, hadn't had a bad game. He's had a very good game. He's just gone a little bit unnoticed because of the play by Boletsky and Melkin. But we can't underestimate the, the, what Levidian brings to the table as he misses the free throw. And the offensive rebound is to Berman. Great, great pass. What a pass there. Got, gave it to Levidian where only he could get it. And Levidian lays it up and in. We mentioned it would be a battle of the insides, and so far it looks like Vidian is owning up to his rep. Well, Portnoy's been in foul trouble. It's a nice bounce pass from Pearl is to given to Kahana. Kahana can't finish, and the ball rolls around the rim, but he is fouled. Portnoy, that is, and he will go to the line for two. Portnoy, I think, Portnoy has three fouls. Tripp has two fouls, and I, I think Kahana might have two also. But you know, those are the three. Those are the three-headed monster in the front court. He can't have all of them out. 
you know, someone's got to guard Lavidian. You know, we know that Berger's a great defender. He's got great size as Portnoy knocks down the first. Shulman checking into the game. And it looks like Tripp will check into the game for Portnoy. Maybe doing a little bit of offensive defense, a little early for that, but he definitely wants to keep his team out of foul trouble. Um, yeah, as I was saying before, Berger has great size, but I don't know if he's strong enough to necessarily guard Lavidian, as uh, a lot of players really aren't <laughs> strong enough to guard Lavidian, except for the few guys here on Cats. We are getting word from Berman's sideline that they want to keep the gas, keep pushing the gas pedal, not to try to slow down. And an errant pass thrown by Lowenstein. Wasn't aware where he was on the court. Threw it to the backcourt. And it will be back to Katz, trying to trim this lead back to uh, 15. Shulman to Laska, pump fake. Laska, wild shot. Picked up Sky for the rebound for Lavidia. To, to uh, Glasshoffer. Glasshoffer loses the ball. Ball knocked to Low to Lowenstein. Lowenstein doesn't see an open. Melkin finally sees an open. Boletsky was wide open before in the corner. Boletsky now shoots it, and it's good. He kind of shows us what if he was, if they if he would have gotten the ball at the beginning of that play when he was wide open in the corner. He showed us that he was going to make that shot by making an even tougher shot. Shulman, no good. Rebounded. Ball locked away. Picked up by. Melkin and a foul is called on Shulman. A little bit over aggressive there. You know, we talked about Shulman before. He is overly aggressive, but sometimes, I mean, it's been good for Katz this whole time, so why not keep going to it? He burns through the defense, burns through the press of Kohelet, burns through the press of Ida Crown, gets into the lane. Why, why stop? You know, you make, a, you make a foul, it's okay. You know, it's only the second team foul. Just keep playing aggressive, Shulman, and you'll be good. You'll be good. That's what your team needs. Glasshoffer gives it to Melkin to set up the offense. It looked like he was about to shoot that. Oh, Melkin pulling from there. Great ball movement from Melkin to Lowenstein to Levidian. Shot is off. Picked up by Kahana, and it is good. Lasko taking out two defenders there with that shot, trying to go for the block. Left a wide open Kahana who lays it up easily to cut this lead to 20. Melkin to Glasshoffer. Glasshoffer to Lowenstein. Lowenstein pump fakes. Crowd wanted to travel. No call. Ball out of the hands of Glasshoffer. Glasshoffer pass to Levidian. Lowenstein in the corner. Three is up. Three is off the rim. Picked up by Pearl. No, ball knocked away. Ball will go to Ehrman. Berman is right. Good active hands, and Schaff is back into the game. See what he can do. Checking in for Lowenstein, giving him a breather. Schaff hitting two threes in the first half. And a timeout is called by Katz. Lowen uh, Coach Udowitz hurriedly telling his team to get into the huddle. We, we have stuff to talk about. We're running out of time here. We're down by 20. We need to make a run right here. He probably wants to set up a good defensive play to try to get some good transition offensive looks. Definitely. And we haven't seen Beta, but we haven't seen Beta in the game yet this quarter. I'm sure he'll be checking in soon. I don't think he's in foul trouble. Um, but yeah, an interesting call by Coach Udowitz. And no sign of Betes. Looks like they, they want to go to a little bit of a bigger lineup. Levidian has been dominating on the inside there. No thing that they could really do. You know, nothing they could really do. Um, but Cats, you know, they did a great job on Ryan Boker. Ryan Boker, a very, very good center in the Sarachek tournament. They kind of shut him down a little bit as the ball is, as the shot is missed by Boletsky. Ball knocked away. Foul called on Berman. Kahana, great hustle there. The big man making fast moves, getting that ball. Quick hands from the big man. And Katz want, Katz's defense is going to want to keep putting pressure on the ball. That is what we've been reported. And Lasko gives it to Shulman to run the offense. Shulman to trip down low. Shulman can't get anything. Or er, trip back to Shulman. Shulman misses the floater. And it will go back to Berman, or er, Katz. 
Shulman a little bit frustrated there. He knows he can hit that shot. We know he can hit that shot. He will hit that shot. If he just keeps playing his game and clears his head, he will definitely get back into a groove. Exactly what I was thinking. He needs to stop thinking, and he will be, he'll be fine. Shot missed by Kahana, picked up by Schaff, and Kahana running back bumps into Schaff, and Schaff is fouled, only that, the 13 foul. That looks like Schaff set up that foul. As he, he saw he was being chased, and he just kind of stopped in his tracks, let him hit him. It's good strategy, especially when you're in the bonus. You know, those fouls can be really frustrating, 95 feet from the basket, especially if you're giving the other team free throws. Luckily this time, there weren't any free throws given. Glass off for the inbound. Looks like a little bit of ball denial here. Given to Melkin, looking for a trap. Melkin easily breaks it, gives it to Levinson, who just checked into the game. Levinson, looking for options, thrown almost to the backcourt. Melkin hurries and gets that ball. Shop. They know he's a shooter now as number 13 who just checked into the game. Max Lewis for the first time will not give him that shot as the shot is missed by Berman. Picked up by Levidian. Levidian misses. Picked up by Levinson. No, call foul, no foul called. Picked up by Levinson again. And a foul is called on... on Katz. Loose ball foul. Frustration is setting over this team. As number 12, David Zach, <clears throat> guard, checking into the game for the first time. That possession had a lot of hustles shown by Berman. They had offensive rebound off their offensive rebound. They're winning inside the paint, which is really the key to success for us. Definitely. They're definitely getting inside the paint. And, you know, we see sometimes versatile big men like Levidian. They try to do a little bit too much. They try to drive in. A Champ drives in and gets fouled by Lewis. Great play by Schaff. You know, and you know, as I was saying before, Levidian, very versatile player. He's waiting for that pass. You know, we've seen it a lot of good ball movement on the from the outer, from outside the key, inside the key, for, within the key. A little bit of a triangle action there, and Levidian gets easy layups. As Schaff misses the first of two. Berman coach knows how to set up ball movement plays to get his players easy looks. I mean. For Cats, when you have guys like Portnoy and Tripp and Kahana, you could try to set up to do and do the same thing. Melkin checks out of the game. Into the game is number 25, Jake Ellie, for the first time tonight. Ellie stepping and guarding Lewis. Now Shulman running the offense, being guarded by Levison. Goes right by Levison, bumps, and an offensive foul. And he is frustrated, and I think. And it looks like Berger is going to check into the game for Shulman. And it's just not Shulman's night. Oh, there's Shulman staying in the game. Fetish coming into the game for Shulman. Okay, Shulman is out of the game. He needs to calm down. Looks like the coach is going to go over and talk to him. Ball to Levidia. Being chased by the smaller guards. Pass saved by, by Levison. Great, great. Idea there by Levison, who blocks off the Cats defenders. Picked up by Schaff. Schaff gives it to Levidian, who's open on the inside, and he lays it up in and to extend this lead to a 23-point lead. I just saw Portnoy actually go over to Shulman over the bench, say some encouraging words to him, keep his teammates' heads up. Listen, Shulman and Portnoy, both juniors on this. Sorry, Portnoy's a senior, senior leader on this team, telling Shulman, keep your head up. Okay, you're, you're not a senior yet. You still got another year. Nice floater there by Pearl. Pearl not getting the three, decides to drive. And a foul is called as Pearl grabs the jersey of Levidian. Not the smartest play there, as that will put Levidian at the free throw line. We'll see what the big man can do there. For one and one. Now checking back into the game is number four, number five, uh, Ezra Boletsky, brother of Isaac Boletsky, played here in the Saratech tournament in that 2013 team. <clears throat> Shout out to that team, as we mentioned before, consisting of Joey Levidian, Josh Klein, as, uh, Isaac Boletsky as the first free throw is good. And can't forget about Josh Stern, 1,000-point score for this Berman school. Speaking of Josh's, we'd like to give a shout out to Josh Deutsch. Shout out to Josh Deutsch and Ellen Pescohova. Second free throw is up, and it is no good. Rebounded by Tripp. Give it to Betash. First time seeing him into the game for the second half. 
Good defense there by Boletsky. He's been everywhere this game. Oh, nice no-look pass from Schaub. And Levison is fouled. One bright spot for Katz has definitely been Betesh. You know, not only in this game, but in the tournament. Such a, you know, he's really undersized, but that doesn't mean anything. You know, when you're undersized, we just saw a great game between Mag and David and Valley Tora. Valley Tora had a 6'6 guy, two 6'7 guys, like a 6'5 guy, probably like a 7-footer in there somewhere. Um, and the tallest player on MDY, Mag and David, was 6'2. And we saw the great guard play by Mag and David. And we're kind of seeing the same thing here from this Cats team. Although they're struggling a bit here, we know what they have. <coughs> Betesh is also only a junior, so he'll be back next year. Betesh, ball rolls in. Speaking of juniors coming back next year, if you look down the roster, I would say it's mainly juniors on this team. And there's even a sophomore on it, so I think they're set for the future. And there's a nice defensive play, and Lewis will go to the line. To shoot two, great defense there. Um, I believe it was Betash who got the steal, as we were talking about him before. Now he needs to be the leader on this court right now. It seems like they have a little bit of a younger team. Lewis a junior, Zach a junior, Trip a senior, um, Sawson also a senior. But you know, when you're the point guard, no matter how old you are, we've seen so many players in this tournament that are point guards and that aren't even seniors. And they're still running the show. They're still doing a very fantastic job as Lewis misses the second, picked up by Shaw. And Levison brings up the ball. No no really tight pressure here from, from uh, Katz. Katz <coughs> into the game, Jack Ellie. Nice pass and nice block. Berman's ball movement's been unreal. They are a well-oiled machine. This coach knows exactly what he's doing. Definitely. They got so much skill. They got so much team. They have a lot of great teamwork and great chemistry. Betesh tips the ball away. Trap in the corner. Shop out to Boletsky. Boletsky drives ball, knocked away. Somehow gets to Ellie. And Ellie puts it in for his first points of the game as this lead expands to it seems to be one of those nights where everything's just going right for one team and, the ball. and going wrong for the other. Great aggressive th play there from Donnie Sawson to cut this lead to 21 with 12 seconds left in the quarter. Ellie with the ball, and he is fouled. Not such a good foul there as they are almost, they're in the double bonus going into the fourth quarter. After this one and one, Ellie steps up to the line, junior point guard. And the fouls do not reset in between quarters, only in between halves. Checking back into the game is Zev Namro coming in for Boletsky, getting another standing ovation as he has been this whole entire game, every time he subs out. Well deserved, well deserved. First free throw, bounces around the rim, no good, picked up by Kozowski. Kozowski out to Shop. Shop, nice no look pass to Levinson. 4 3 at the end of the quarter, no good. Ball loose, and the shot is no good. Did not get it off in time, and we will head to a commercial break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. Welcome back, and uh, to start open up to open up the fourth quarter, Katz is going to be focused on getting three cool, the first three stops to get the three quick buckets and kind of chance swing the momentum. Yeah, three buckets. It's still, it's a 15-point game back where they were at the beginning of the half. 
They just need to get some. Another nice look pass by Schaff. Ball moved around to Levis or to Kozowski for three. No good. Picked up by Levison. Levison puts it up. No good. Rebound by Tripp, and a foul is called on Levison. 95 feet from the basket. No free throws. For this. It seems that this half, Berman's go-to play has been the drive and kick to the open shooters. Whether they take that shot or not is up to them. They've been making the great decision, but it's been all based off the drive and kick. Now into the game for Katz is Lasko, Pearl, Berger, Kahana, and Tripp. Pearl drives up, puts it in, goes baseline. Pearl has done that so many times this game. Gets the foul call. Let's see if he can finish as they got the first stop of, their, of that possession. And now they look to capitalize on what Coach Udowitz has said. And the free throw is good from Pearl. To cut this to an 18 point lead. If you fight, you fight, you fight. Just never give up. Ball to Ellie. Ellie drives against Kahana. Oh. And he goes down hard. But he seems to be okay. Safe play there. They're both going for the ball as the jump ball is called. Ellie looks to be good. Man, these guys are tough. Taking hard hits, falling to the ground. These, these guards of Berman are tough. It's the semifinal game. You can't, you can't hold anything back. Definitely. Do not hold back any time. Pearl being aggressive. Gives it to Kahana. Kahana back to Pearl. Pearl fading away three. It's good. <laughs> nice shot from Pearl. Pearl is feeling it after hitting the and one. That put a smile on my face. You know, he's been struggling this whole game. Got a couple of floaters to go. Got the and one recently and just nails a three. Great pass from Kahana. There Levis. was that driving kick. Levison finds an open shot. Looking to answer. It's off the back rim. Picked up by Berger. He looks to push. Goes down the court. Didn't see an open Lasko. Lasko's open in the corner. Still doesn't see him. Pearl. You know he wants to shoot. He doesn't that time. He's still looking to shoot. Given to Tripp. Tripp drives. Give it to Kahana. No one can take him on the inside. He misses the bunny. Right to Tripp. He puts it in. And it's a 13-point lead. A little 8-0 run there from Katz. And they are hyped. Shulman bouncing off the bench, congratulating his teammates. They got a couple of rolls in that sequence. That was just what we were talking about earlier in the half. We'll see if Berman decides to, you know, to put in a couple of their pl uh, better players in. You know, I mean, sorry, not the better players, the starters in. Because, you know, I get it. You know, you're a little bit comfortable with a 23-point lead. You're a little bit comfortable with an 18-point lead. But when you're, a team goes on an 8-0 run, you got a guy like Pearl who's heating up. you got great hustle, great and um, great ball movement from Katz. you got to start thinking of something to, to stop this. You know, you never want to let up. No, no let up. We saw, we saw a let up last night in the uh, Tier 4 semifinal between Kohelet and, and uh, Farber and from Detroit. And I'm sure some teams have seen that, seen that all the time, seen it in multiple games. When a team is up by a lot, they kind of like take, the, take their uh, foot off the pedal. But this time, it should not happen, it, er, says the Berman coach. Coming out of the timeout, Katz is still still pushing for the three stops, three buckets strategy. It's been working so far. Ball swung to Boletsky. Boletsky to Melkin. Melkin sets up the offense. Maybe a little, maybe to drain a little bit of clock, you know, minimize that opportunity that Katz could have. As long as they could put the ball in the hoop, they should be fine. Nice pass from uh, Shaw to Levidian to Boletsky. Gets through defenders. Ball knocked away to Levidian. Levidian. Levidian, right place, right time, lays it up and in. Unreal court vision over there by all the Berman players. Yeah, we've seen a lot of great passes from Shaw. Shaw has, you know, he's a great passer. And a long three there. A little bit ill advised there, a little quick. Definitely could have taken a step in there. And we have a... A little bit of confusion here from us. We will get you the report as soon as we know what happened. And it looks like a technical, was fa a technical foul was called on the Cats coach. Was not happy with that. Boletsky steps up to the line, shoot the technical free throws. Sinks the first. <clears throat> As 
Second out one is up. And rolls around the rim and drops. Puts the lead back up to 17 with 5.33 left to go in this one. 2-2 two -two semis. Very exciting stuff here going on. We had a very exciting game last game between the TABC Storm and the Hank Hurricane. Actually, I think TABC won by like 12. But it was exciting in the beginning. Um, Boletsky, ball in the backcourt, being guarded by Pearl. Boletsky easily gets past Boletsky. Pitts, pick set by Kazowski. Back up to Melkin. Melkin sets up the offense. Gives it to Kazowski. Kazowski wants to shoot. Swings it to Levidian on the three-point line. Levidian back inside to Kazowski. Kazowski inside to Shum. Nice pass to Boletsky. 4-3 is no good. Rebound Kahana. Kahana looking for an outlet pass. Ball knocked away by Boletsky. Picked up by Kahana again. Kahana's got to be careful. Boletsky's everywhere. Giving up to Lasko. A little bit of a fast break here. Three from the corner is no good. Rebounded by Tripp. Skied for that one. Looks to go back inside. Reverse layup. Fade away is no good. Tripp fading away there. A little bit questionable. Should have maybe looked for his teammates. Schomp drives. Kicks it out again to Kozowski. Kozowski floater is good. Once again, great ball movement from Berman. From Melkin. From Schaff to Kozowski for the layup. And as I, sa as I said that, Glasgow drives all the way to the hoop and misses the shot. He needs to really settle down. You know, and time's running out, I get that. But that doesn't mean you need to panic. We, got, we have this newly installed shot clock here at the Red Saracek Tournament. You have, a, you know, you don't have plenty of time. You have time. You know, just settle down. Get some good looks. The Cats, the Cats team should start running some half-court sets. Try and get, maybe try to mimic the bourbon ball movement. Definitely. Well, I mean, mimic any ball movement. Sh open shot, no good from Berger. And the ball goes out of bounds. Saved by Pearl. Picked up by Tripp. Great effort from Pearl. Gives it to Lasko. Nice pass. And Lasko lays it up then to cut it to 17. They're going to need to look for steals and easy buckets from here on out. As Glasshopper looks to be stuck in the backcourt, given to number 21, Nadav Turritz, who steps into the game for the first time. Back to Turritz from Kozowski. He lays it up and in. The little guy, junior point guard. <coughs> Three from Lasko. It's good over Glasshopper. Glasshopper fell asleep there and left Lasko open. Game, now a 22-point lead. No, I think the score is wrong there. Um, I believe it's a... Uh, 18-point lead. Pearl for three rims in and out. What a heartbreaker there as it was halfway down. Boletsky driving through everyone. Being guarded tight by Pearl. Pearl, no foul called. And there is the foul. Spoke too soon there. Pearl, a little antsy there. Trying to get that steal. You know, he, you know you're down. You got to get a steal. You got to get easy buckets because right now it's not looking good for Cats. Cats just called the timeout. But it's still not too late to press the panic button. Okay, your Cats, you hit two threes. You're in this game still. I believe in Cats. You believe in Cats, Quacky? I think Cats could do it. It's March. It's the time for madness. Speaking of March, we just saw Nevada come from behind from 22 points in the second half to beat Cincinnati. A lot of upsets this year. A lot of upsets in Saracek, too. Eh, not really, but um, a lot of good games in Saracek, and that's what we like to see. If UMBC was able to beat Virginia, I think Katz is going to be able to make this comeback. I do, too. Hey, what seed was UMBC? 16. And how much is Katz down by? 16. Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our sponsor, Step It Up Basketball. Big basketball camp down there in Florida. Wide range of, of uh, students and players, boys and girls. <clears throat> they come for either the full summer, half the summer, quarter of the summer, just so they can get in, get their reps in, get some good basketball knowledge from our coaches. We have, I believe, eight um, YU Max basketball players who made the cha uh, who won the champion Skyline champion this year and will be there coaching the players. Very exciting stuff as Bleski Bletz Bleski Bletski, sorry, misses the first and makes the second to make it a 17 point lead. As Bletski steps out of the game, gets a 
round of applause from his fans. Lasko calling out a play, looking for a pick, steps up for three. It's good. Lasko not giving up just yet. Turrets dribbling the ball up. Ball knocked out of bounds off of Turrets. Turrets sitting on the ground saying, hey, where's the foul? We can look a little, a little bit of contact there. But no call. And the ball will go back to Boca. Or, yeah, Boca will go back to the Storm. We'll see what uh, Lasko wants to do here as he takes off the dribble. Nice pass to Tripp. Tripp, ball knocked away. Foul called on number 24, Yoni Snow Jr. checking into the game for the first time tonight. 14-point lead with three minutes left. See, this game is definitely not out of hand. Tripp can capitalize on his free throws. They're in the bonus. Any ticky-tack foul that could, um, any ticky-tack foul from Berman will send him to the free throw line, stops the clock. He just needs to nail his free throw. I'm sorry for that. He misses the front end of a one and one Kazowski to number 13, Namro. Namro was looking for snow. Snow, nowhere to be found. There is no snow. Nowhere to be found. I mean, it's late March. It's still freezing cold outside. I have no idea why. But, and, but the ball will go back to the hurricane, or, or the storm, as the three is missed. That's a skies for the rebound. And it will be a jump ball back. To Berman with 2.30 left in this game. Little man, big heart, Betesh going up for that rebound. Betesh definitely going up for it. Definitely with big heart. We talked about that before. Checking into the game now is number 12, David Zach. Seen him a little bit before. Turrets ball knocked away from behind. Off of Katz. Great, great, uh, great awareness there by Betesh. Great, great quickness from Betesh to try to knock that ball away and get the steal. Ball into number two, Zach Fogel. Fogel drives around everyone, puts it up, and a charge is called. The little plays add up to big things. Definitely, Jonah Tripp stepping up for his team. Interesting, interesting decision there from Tripp. Obviously it pays off. Fogel standing at 5'8", and Tripp standing at 6'3". He knew he had his position. He drew the charge. If he went up to block it, he has the implication of maybe fouling him, maybe him making the shot if he didn't get the block, maybe him blocking him, the ball going out of bounds, going back to Berman. Great decision there from Tripp. <clears throat> That's a veteran play right there from the senior power forward. Lasko puts it up. No good. And the ball taken away back from Las by Lasko to Tripp. Kicks out to Pearl. 4-3. It's nothing but Nets. And the lead is now 11. There's one thing you can say about these Storm is that they don't give up. They definitely don't give up as Pearl has been heating up in the second half. I'm surprised they haven't put a hand up in his face yet. And if foul is called and turrets will go to the line for two. And a technical foul is called. Questionable decision. If I'm Katz, you need to calm down. This game's not over. Okay, I know, and listen. You give him two free throws, that's fine, okay? Free throws have been, been, people have been missing free throws left and right here in this tournament. Now Turrets, he is a junior. He steps in, nails the first, just as I said, a lot of free throws are missed. But you have to think, you know, the game's in the waning seconds. You know, he needs to make these free throws, as he does. We can't be giving him free points. We really can't, and we're only down by 11. The Cats definitely has to get their emotions in check if they want to pull off this comeback. As Turrets shoots his second pair of free throws for the technical, I would like to give a shout out to my parents, mom and dad, watching back home in Columbus, Ohio with my grandma, and to all my fans out there. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to my grandpa for a happy belated birthday as Turrets knocks down all four free throws. Great touch there from Turrets. Truly, he has ice in his veins. I think everyone has ice in their veins at this point when it's, you know, 30 degrees. What is it, March 18th? <laughs> and a foul is called on Burr, on a cat, and Levison will step to the line for two.
and these cats faithful giving a round of applause for Andrew Pearl who has had a fantastic game only a junior he'll be back next year Pearl showing sportsmanship walking over to the Berman bench shaking hands to the coach already great sportsmanship there as Levison makes one and misses lead now up to 16 got to be conservative with the time here Lasco bringing the ball up up oh. And looks like we have a stoppage of play. <laughs> the ref calming down the cat's bench, telling him to sit down. A little bit overexcited. You know, we've had a great season. We've had a great tournament. Did they just tee him up again? Uh, oh, it looks like it. As oh. the third tee now this game? Yeah. Interesting. Last night we saw about six technicals in one game, in one quarter actually, which forced Harkin to play three on one. Uh, stepping up to the line is Yoni Snow, I believe. Misses the first, puts up the second, is no good. Keep it at a 16 point lead. And a timeout is called by Berman, or Katz. One of them. One of them, yeah. I'm taking a break here. You know, minute 52 left in this game. Really haven't seen, we've, uh, we've seen a little bit of a late spark from Katz. You know, they cut the lead to 11 behind a strong effort from Pearl. You know, imagine if he was hitting those shots in the beginning of the game. He was pretty much shooting not only better shots, no, no, not better shots, more less difficult shots, but, you know, better looks. You know, it's just like he can make those, and he made tougher shots here. He, f he started making those in the beginning of the game, it would have been a whole different story. Pearl, definitely one of the big factors for this team, being and able to stretch the floor. Coming out of the timeout, Katz's last, one of his last messages to the team is to finish strong, and remember the most important thing about this is to be a mensch during the games. Definitely. And a foul is called, and Turrets will go back to the line where he's 4 for 4. Try to push this lead. Ariel Berger is talking to the rep. A little bit of a, little bit of a, uh, little bit of a argument going on between the Cats player and the ref. And another technical is called. Turrets will go back to the line for four more free throws. You know, uh, Berman, they've been playing so well. They're a great team. You know, they really are a very good team. They were competing in Tier 1 against Frisch. Frisch, great organization. They we're in neck and neck in that game. Eventually, you know, Frisch pulling away in that one. But we have to respect Berman. You know, they've had a lot, couple of tough years. Beating, getting beat by the other Jewish Academy in Rockville, Maryland repeatedly time after time. This year they beat him three times, I believe. As Turrets makes the first, misses the second. And we have to believe this cat, this Berman team is a very special one. We know we saw them make a, a special run beating my home team, Columbus Tour Academy, in the first game in 2013. Beating he Hebrew Academy of Miami in the second game. Beating Ida Crown in a close one in the third game and eventually losing to MTA in the final game. That was a special run as being ranked 15th. We talked about Ida Crown being ranked 15th last year. Ida Crown, Ida Crown was ranked 15th last year and won Tier 2. They almost won Tier 2 as a 15th seed. This year, they have their, set, the eyes, their eyes set on gold. And Turrets knocked down both of those second, both of those two free throws. He went three for four, seven for eight for the game. There's no doubt that this Berman team is definitely special. It's key contributors. Lowenstein and Boletsky will be coming back next year to try and make another run. Also, um, Glassoff, a little bit of a quiet game, but we know he can definitely produce for this team. Very skilled player. Um, and also next year, you know, Cats can keep their head up. 
They got Betesh coming back. They got Zach coming back. They got Shulman coming back. They got Pearl coming back. They got Munzer coming back. They got Kahana coming back. Keep their heads up. And you know, sometimes there will be a player that's like a freshman that'll come in here, razzle dazzle, show everyone what he's got. Freshmen and sophomores, we've seen it a lot. We see Melman from uh, Kohelet, freshman point guard. We saw Natsiri, sophomore point guard from Mag and David. And just a lot of other guards that just come in, play tough, and do a good job on the court. And the free throw is missed, put up by Portnoy. Puts it in to cut the lead to 17 with over a minute left. Full court pressure given to number 25, Ellie. Ellie gives it to Kozowski. Not Mike Kozowski, Dove Kozowski. Snow for three. It is good. Giving the bench some minutes here. You know, capitalizing on it. You know, Snow also. He's a junior next year. You know he could step into the into the roles into the role that is being left behind by Lavidian. And a foul is called, and Lasko will head to the line for two. Now Lasko, he's a senior. He's been such a great player for this turn for this team in the tournament. Such a great leader. He has to be telling guys like A.B. Batesh and Jacob Schulman, telling them what has to happen with them. How he had such a successful career here at at Cats slash YHS. I believe Cats, they started becoming Cats like three years ago. So I think he was the freshman who would, it changed. So he had a very storied career here as long as, as well as the others, Jonah Tripp, Daniel Portnoy. Just gotta tell these young kids to keep it up. As Snow misses the three, picked up by <clears throat> Lasko. Lasko will definitely be remembered for his time and service spent here in Katsushiva. Shot is no good. Great pass down low from Lewis to Portnoy. Portnoy cannot finish. Rebounded by Ellie. Sorry, that is Zach Fogel. Fogel loses the ball. Picked up by Portnoy. Portnoy can't capitalize. And Turret is fouled. And that looks like... There's a foul on Lasko, so he goes over to the... That is his last foul. With eight seconds left, he fouls out. Goes over to the coaches from Berman, shakes their hands. Gets a round of applause. Gets hugs from his coach, gets hugs from his players. When you're a senior and you've played basketball all your high school career, it's really sad to play in your... I mean, it's their, not their last game, one of their last games. As your career dwindles down, I know, as a player, just sad. You're always reminiscent of these great high school days of basketball. As Turrets nails the second free throw with seven seconds left in the game. Clock is running down. Shot up by Sasson, and he hits it. And that is the game. Berman beating Katz 72-55 to and will advance to the Tier 2 Championship here tomorrow at the Maxton Athletic Center against the TABC Storm. And we will send it to a quick commercial break back with interviews from the players.
back here at the Max Student Athletic Center here with three Berman players, Josh Levidian, Ezra Boletsky, and Kobe Melkin. I'm sorry, I've been announcing his name all game. It's been a tiring day. Guys, what a great game you played. We knew a lot of it was on the line, tier two, tier two championship on the line. What was your motivation going into this game? Um, we knew that they were a very good uh, team, and they, wa they were undefeated this whole tournament, so we're like, it's going to be a fight. And we came out all, all hands on deck. We just came out, fight. We won the game, you know? Uh, we knew that one of the main things that was going to happen is we needed to break their press, and we knew if we broke their press, we would have an easy up and down game, and that's what happened tonight. Melkin, you're the leader of this team. What did you tell the guys going into this game to get them ready? Um, I mean, there have been some upsets by this team, and we just needed to make sure that we weren't going to overlook this game at all, that we knew where we want to be by, this, by the end of this tournament, so we had to look at this game seriously and really fight during the whole game. It's great to hear. Great game, guys. Good luck tomorrow. We'll see you there. For <laughs> Stay tuned for Farber vs. Harcum. I'm Alex Lutzke along with Zach Shulman, and we out. <laughs>